Talking Heads podcast live from Pattaya, Thailand with your host, Dave D. And welcome to Badia, welcome to Thailand, and of course, welcome down here at the podcast studio at Talking Heads Podcast. Live and in the studio as per normal, Mondays and Fridays. He's like clockwork, this guy. David Buckley, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Nice to see you here. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks, mate. Not too bad uh, at all. Now, you've got something that a lot of people would probably like to know about, and that is um, owning land in Thailand, I believe, Dave. Well, more sp- you know, to, to correct you slightly, property. Property. Uh, there's, you know, there's a difference between owning property and land. Okay. Which I'm happy to explain do, shortly. Do enlighten, do enlighten me, sir. Well, I mean, you know, obviously land, we know what that is, but it's, pro- it's possible to own a condo in your own name. Mm-hmm. And that's provided when all the square footage of that condo block is added up, that the foreigners don't own more than 49% of the square footage so you could have a really big apartment mm. but as provided it's within the 49 percent you could own it in your own name right land is slightly different uh, opinions differ about whether it's possible to own one la- one rye of land or not um what i'm told is is that uh, they did bring in uh, the authorities did bring in uh, legislation to allow it but now they're sort of debating whether they should backtrack on it backtracking or not. yeah 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 that's, that's not that's not never really heard normal. of in thailand I'm say not really normal for thailand is it to no, backtrack? no no, no. <laughs> yeah the, the editor's indecision is final mm. um yeah so um we um as regards land it is possible to be uh, to be left a array of land in some in your spouse's will okay interesting but if you cannot register it in your own name. Right. And you must sell it within one year of getting it. So basically, the, the, the thinking here, I, I believe, is, is that um, you know, if, if you've spent most of the money on uh, acquiring a place, you know, if your spouse dies, mm. you know, should you really miss out on, on you know, the, the, the property and the land that sure. you've, um, you've invested in? So and you have to sell it for in one year. You have to sell it within unfair. one year. Well, yeah, but uh, you know, at least it's You've yours to yeah, sell, sure, if you sure. see what I mean. Yeah. And, and okay, and, and, the, but, and the foreigners li- allowed to keep the, the proceeds. Yeah, I take it. Yeah, the, the big the big quandary I, I would imagine is I mean, I was just thinking of my my own situation. You know, the, my uh, there's a house in the name of in my wife's name, and uh, you know, I, I have the visions of saying. Uh, look, darling, do you want to do you want to will leave me this this house in your will? And of course, the thing is, then she's not leaving it to her family. Mm. So I'm, I'd be putting her in a real dilemma sure. of you know, do I leave it to my husband or do I leave it to my family? It, it, it's not so clear in our case because in the early days, yeah, I made all the payments, mm. but. Since my wife's been in England and earning good money, she's been making all the payments. So, uh, you know, but I does that does that in in Thailand does that does that make a difference? Because I know in the UK, you know, I mean, I like me, I paid all the, the mortgage for ever, and yeah. my wife never paid a penny. No. But at the end of it, they're still entitled to half. That's <laughs> that's correct. But <laughs> you, uh, yeah, there are certain things about. UK law that uh, uh, I've certainly fallen foul of in yeah. a couple of divorces so, anyway. So have I. I mean, what? Oh, uh, uh, what? She can have what? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's yeah. like... She, the, but, mm. I mean, you know, the, the fact is, is that if, if you know, your wife is the homemaker, if you like, mm. um, you know, she's doing a job, but it's just not ostensibly paid. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think there's a, you know, there is a... So, you know, so it, uh, owning... Let me just get this right. I mean... Like, Talk, talk, I'm going to say a couple of things, and if I'm wrong, please correct me. Okay, yeah, yep. um, I know one of the things is that as a company, you can rent the land for say 99 years mm. and build your property on there. Yeah, is, is that true? I mean, do you know about that? Yeah, it's it's a bit bit murky. That I mean, you know, the, the, the idea is is that uh, you, know, you own 49 percent of, of the, the company, company, yeah, sure, and the company owns the land. Mm. Uh, I, you know. Thailand is, is famous for finding ways around problems. It sure. sort of, uh, you know, it creates the problem, and then there's a whole sort of cottage industry that grows up mm. finding ways around it. Sure. So, um, you know, and that is one of them. Right. But, okay. But you, you, you can, uh, you know, a friend of mine had a company, but in the end, he, you know, 
he sold the company to his wife. Right, okay. You know? so, uh, so, so to look after her. Right, right, okay. Um, so that's one of the ways of doing it. I mean, the other way, of course, uh, what, 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 I, what I sort of, when I speak to foreigners about you know, building a house. I mean, a lot of the foreigners come over here and they build houses. And, of course, they, they've got the land and it's their family's land, Mrs. Mm. land, and, of mm. course, mm. they build the house on there. And mm. I, I always said, you know, like, you do realise, you know, once you've built the house on there, basically it's, it's, it's there, it's theirs. You know, because if you ever separate or go your own separate ways, you can't really turn around and say, well, take your house. You know, no, I, I think the... I used to sort of be told that there was um, a thing that you could actually own the the house, right? But not the land it sits on. Okay. And I said, well, how does that, that, that work? Sense, you know, sure. if, um, if you know, if we split up, does that mean I get a sort of a, a big crane and a, you know, <laughs> a, a low loader and whack the house on the back of it and take it somewhere else? Yeah, not really. I mean, yeah, you know, it doesn't sound too realistic to me, no. but. Um, I think it's possible to own the house, but not right. The I don't. I have never heard of that bit. But yeah, uh, but you know, they they play around with it. That you know, they do this tie elite thing where if you have got forty million baht or something to invest in a, the company, own a rye or something, yeah. you can own a rye of land. Yeah. But that seems to be in debate as well. I mean, I, I think a lot of these things that we've been discussing over the past few weeks won't be fully resolved it, until the government is fully resolved. Would I, would I be out of bed if I said, you know, at the end of the day, even if we could, say, own land here, you know, own the land here or whatever we are, I mean, at the end of the day, we're still visitors here. We're still in, we're still in the country as visitors. And, of course, you know, uh, you know going to the, the immigration every 90 days or doing our visas every year i mean as foreigners we are still visitors and at any time of course if there was anything in the future we could be told to leave no well i suppose we could we yeah could, i mean in theory yeah uh, you know, there, there was you know several sides to this argument i mean i i know for example that um, back in the uk it's almost impossible for a Londoner to own a, a flat in central London because mm. they've all been snapped up by people who've got rather a lot of oil behind them, yeah, let's sure. say. And, mm. uh, you know, the prices have just gone out of out of reach. Craziness. Of, 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 Craziness, you know, yeah. Your typical south-east Londoner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah, me. Yeah. You know, but it's, so, in a sense, I think Thailand is right to be sort of protectionist about its sure. land and, and not sort of let people mm. own willy-nilly because once you take those restrictions away you've lost it it's gone yeah, isn't it's, it? gone. it's gone and, and we're seeing that in the uk i think in the uk i mean at the moment i just think it's crazy i just think it's a free-for-all mm. and i mean i think that they've got no control no that's that's my honest opinion no and, sad and you, you you get things about are these russian oligarchs sort of um, uh, putting money into the Conservative mm. Party funds and yeah. all this sort of thing, sure. so they turned a blind eye to X, Y, and Z going on. Oh, you know, mm. It depends which side of the political spectrum sure. you are, I think. Mm. But I mean, it's uh, at the end of the day, of course, you know that, that England has lost its grip on what's happening over there. And you know, I mean, you imagine, you know, twenty years, twenty-five years ago, whatever we could say, thirty years ago. You know, it was British steel. It was you know British this. It was mm. made in Britain. It was a, there's nothing yeah. like that now. Well, you know, we've we've become you know, more separate. Let's put it that way. You know, the, the we've Welsh, been raped. Today, the Welsh, the have, well, the Welsh have got their own. <laughs> well, the Welsh have got their own assembly. Scotland's got its own parliament. You know, it, it, it's we're, we're united. Well, disunited kingdom. I think we are. Yeah, and of course, well, I mean, you know, there's not. You know, before you could say, okay, something. Name me something that's made in Great Britain. Well, most things are. You know, it's cheaper to make abroad now. There anyway. you go. There you go. Exactly. You know, but years ago, you could say, you know, this was made in Britain. Well, this is we, made. We in, used to have a car yeah, industry. We used to have at a one car time. industry at one time. You know, <laughs> it, it, it was you know British steel, all these kind of things. You know, but yeah. now, now Chinese. I mean, it's it's gone. You know, which is which yeah. is which is sad. You know, because of, you know, uh, I think that the, the economy over there is it priced itself out of the market and, of course, the labour uh, force and how much it costs and prices like this and land prices, rent prices. Yeah, so, uh, it's, a, it's a dodgy, it's a, it's a dodgy d footing, but, you know, I mean, certainly uh, unions pressing quite rightly to get good salaries for their, for mm. their members, um, you know, but it does have an impact on... Sure. 
on you know, whether it goes to a certain level and whether a, a, certain a level Japanese cuts. car maker is going to make cars in Sunderland or yeah, you know, in France. Sure. Right? So it's um, you know, we we could price ourselves out of so. Do you many think? Do you, do you think? So do you think that Thailand keeping their land is a good thing? Yes. Could you um, say that? I, I, you see. There was a time when I was running a property magazine that it was, you know, I, I'd press quite hard for, you know, to, to be allowed to own up to one right mm. because, you know, that would open up all sorts of property markets and, uh, you know, fingers crossed some advertisers would, sure. would, would pile in. So, sure, sure, you know, I, I'd, I had a vested interest, let's say, in, in, in the, the land restrictions being eased. Um, uh, all I would say is I can see why the ties do it, mm. and I'm not sure that I could 100% argue that they're wrong. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's nice to keep, uh, like, they're keeping what's theirs, let's put it that well, way. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Which is a good thing. I mean, look at England. Like I said, it's, 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 it's been cut up that much. It's just bits now. It's not, yeah. even, it's yeah. not even, you know, it's a shame. Never mind. Mm. Uh, top destinations. I mean, is there anything about, more about land that you want to get into? No, there? no, no. I'm, I'm fine. I mean, if it, I mean you... That's the, the limit of my knowledge, and if there's any um, you know, brokers or, or mm. lawyers yeah, out sure. there who know any different, please let us and know. If, and if we've got any guys out there that are doing properties or selling properties, or any, any of you guys, it doesn't matter where you're from, any property company, it doesn't matter. If you want to come in on the show and speak with me and Dave and come in and have a bit of a, a chat with us, you are welcome put, to. It's absolutely free. Please come put, in. Put come us in. right. Yeah, yeah, put, put us right. We're not... Uh, no. We're not with you. you know, I'm sure that people are screaming at the screen now. Going, ah, yeah, 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 you know, well, you know, it, 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 Thailand is famous for its, its, its barroom lawyers, let's say. And, uh, <laughs> you know, everyone has an opinion. Everybody has an opinion and um, everybody knows best. You know, I've expressed my opinion, but uh, no one expects that everyone will agree. No, but it, like I said, if there's any property guys out there and you want to come in on the show, come in on the show, give us a, go- give us a call or send us a message down here at Talking Heads Podcast Live, and you're welcome to come in. Come in, me and Dave. We're on a Monday and a Friday. Uh, we, we're on air at 2 o'clock, and you're welcome to come and have a go. Stay with us. We're going to have a bit of this. AX Media. Our team of creatives, designers and developers collaborate closely to produce visually stunning and captivating digital experiences. Our team is carefully structured to deliver exceptional, personalized and inventive digital solutions from the initial idea to the final product launch. Talking Heads podcast live from Pattaya, Thailand with your host, Dave D. Check out all the latest updates on talkingheadspodcast.live. Thanks for coming back for us in the break. I think I swallowed a part of a tea bag, Dave. To be honest, <laughs> um, I could only improve matters. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, top destinations, uh, according to TripAdvisor, uh, the top uh, ten. Uh, so let's let's go for the top five destinations at the moment uh, on TripAdvisor. If I was to say to you, what do you think the top uh, destination is on TripAdvisor at this moment in time? What would you go for? I would guess. Somewhere like Seoul in Seoul, Korea. yeah, yeah. I mean, um, Dubai is actually, right. is, actually, is actually the first one at the moment. Not particularly a surprise. Surprise. But, uh, Second one, mm, guess Paris. Pa- ah, very, very close. In fact, I can tell you by looking at the list that Paris is number five okay. on the list. Number two on the list is Bali. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, number yeah. three is Thailand. Oh. Number four is London. Oh, really? Yeah, five is Paris and six is Rome. London think, ahead of Paris? Sure. Whoa. Yeah, we're uh, yeah we're up there at three. Oh, right. I mean, that's because of all the, the Tower Bridge and, you know, all the... Yeah, but you know, I, it, I, I'd love to know who, who invented that Paris is a romantic city. I mean, I, I can't well, say I it, in all honesty I've been there, I've been on the periphery, but I've not been I think it's down to the people that go there. I mean, TripAdvisor, I mean, don't people, they score it by points or they give it a star and they leave their, their yeah. comments and, of course, they pull, the, they pull all the information from that and say this is the most Yeah, no, popular. but, I mean, you, if, if you say one adjective to describe Paris, people will say romantic. Yeah. Uh, you know, is it? Uh, and why? You know, Have I, you been there? No, no, I, I can't. Yeah, I can't say. But uh, why, why, why do you think it's romantic? Because of the uh, the Eiffel Tower. Well, so people can leap off the language. <laughs> <laughs> I think leap off. I, I think, in, in fairness, the French language is is you know, has slightly more romance to it than good old English. So yeah, yeah, I think that's reasonable. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. So 
we we agree then. Yeah, we agree that Paris is sort of half romantic. Yeah. So what's London? I mean, yeah. well, London is historic. Historic. It's not. Yeah, well, Paris but it's, but it's is one historic. Of the, yeah, but it's one of the destinations that they're 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 going to. You know, yeah. it's 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 there. It's the you know it's the old. You know, the oh, queen. I'm not knocking it. I mean, you yeah, as a Londoner, I'm quite happy that my uh, my home city is uh, is way up there. But uh, yeah. I think it's I think it's you know the 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 the, 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 the London Bridge and the Tower and all those kind of things. You know, that for, they... for years, and I do mean years, I'd never visited the Tower of London. I lived down the Old Kent Road, which, as the crow flies, is only not a few too miles far. away from it. Not too, and you never went? Never went. Do you know once, uh, when I, I think I was about, I think 10, if I'm right in saying, uh, I queued for six hours to see Tutankhamun. Did you? Yeah. We, we queued and queued and queued. It was in London. It was on an exhibition. I don't know what year it was. Mm. I may be totally wrong on the year, but we queued for around about six hours, and it was the most astonishing thing I'd ever seen in my life. Yeah. Well, I mean, you oh, just, it was worth the wait, was it? Oh, man, yeah. it was worth the wait. I mean, yeah. full-size dogs in solid gold, yeah. you know, and seeing Tutankhamun's coffin and the, the, the mask yeah. and everything that went with it. It was, you know, a 10, 11-year-old kid. It was, oh. um, I was really into it. And, I mean, I thought it was brilliant. Okay. One of the I'm things... sure there's a few bad jokes I could make there, but I won't. <laughs> Well, there is, yeah, 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 sure. I'm sure you can think of something in your... I'll, uh, I'll think something ...warped up, yeah. mind. Um... What about one of the places you visited uh, that you know in your life that you stood out to you? Something you can remember. I mean, you know, if I said to you, what was one of the places that you've been to in your life that stood out and left an impression? Have, have you got anything like that? Yeah, I, I think um, two places actually, and they're quite different. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was very lucky to get a, a trip to the Seychelles when I was in my twenties, nice. and I also was much enamoured with San Francisco. Okay, never been there, wanted to go there, well, been invited I've, there. I've been, uh, I mean, you know, a highlight of a trip to San Francisco is going to Alcatraz out, out yeah, in the Bay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the first time I went, it was a sort of conducted tour with a, you know. A, you went to, a, you actually went to Alcatraz? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, uh, I hate yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that left an impression on me. The first time we were on our conducted tour and the second time it was all sort of, you know, um, through, through radio oh, headphones, through, okay. the, yeah. Yeah, interesting. I found the you know the ability to talk to the ranger or whatever he was yeah, um, sure. much more interesting. Yeah, but I don't think they do that nowadays. But right. you know, I, you know, San Francisco. Uh, I seen, I seen you know, with all the cable cars and you know the, the really windy streets and. Uh, well, it was the wasn't it the, the was the bullet film there? Bullet. Yeah, was that film, film there? there? Yeah, that that. I'm trying to. Uh, my my, let my youngest son is going there next year, yeah, and the, I'm the, the trying to encourage him to look at watch the film Bullet. And the then Bullet, go yeah. And I mean, I know that the car see. the car was in the car was sold, and it was in a, a family's name, a family's possession for thirty some or forty years, mm. or whatever it was, and then it went to the Barrett Jackson auction. Okay. And I think I can't remember what it sold for. I think it sold for six or seven or eight million, whatever it was. Yeah. It was, was it was, it and was, it was an yeah, as as was the film. I yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, but I mean, the the, the I remember watching um, uh, a documentary about George Michael, and he ended up over there in San Francisco, right. and he went with his friend over to Alcatraz. Mm. They were invited over there, mm. and they they met the ranger, mm. and the the ranger went, "Do you want to go?" And in the, in the cell and have a look, and he went in, and as he went in, he shut the door, shut the door and yeah. locked it. And then the ranger left, yeah. and George Michael's going, hello, <laughs> hello, <laughs> shit in me pants, hello. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I, I've done that. I've done the, you know, go, in, go into one of the cells and imagine yeah. how it would be to be locked up. Here for there, for, for the rest of your life. Know, well, days, hours on end. You know, yeah. all, no, not for me, thank you. No, 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 no. But, but it's, you know, it's, it's fascinating. I think it's one of those, you know, the, the wonders of the world, isn't it? Well, the Alcatraz. Yeah. I yeah, uh, I certainly felt better for for you know for making the trip. I would love to go there. Abs absolutely love to go there. And I mean, they they said how was it? Three people that tried to escape and one made it. Yeah, I mean, there, there are various films about it, aren't there? Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, they. Are. I think was it, was Clint Eastwood in one of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Escape from Alcatraz. Yeah. But the, the the I know that not so long ago there was an old boy who was in his 80s or 90s or something, and basically he described everything that they did and how they escaped. Mm. And they think that he is the guy that actually did escape and, yeah. and make it, yeah. which is very, very, well, very Well, I mean, you know, it, it, 
you know, obviously you can see San Francisco from, from mm. Alcatraz. Yeah. And but it's it, the it current, doesn't isn't seem it? too far. It's the current. But it's the current and yeah. the cold. And the cold, yeah. yeah. Mm, there we go. Uh, that's one of them if you wanted to do. Uh, if let us know where you've been and what you like. Stay with us. Talking Heads podcast live with Dave D and Dave Buckley. Uh, just in the afternoon, we're down here on a Friday afternoon and we're down here at the studio talking about just anything today, what comes to mind, to be honest. Uh, one of the things that I did like and I did uh, uh, sort of uh, look at is, um, you know, when you're abroad and you've never been to Thailand and you look at all these sites and they say, you know, uh, what's what should you do and what shouldn't you do when you go to Thailand and all this? Um, and also they sort of advise you um, about... Um, what to do and not what to do. I mean, things like, I mean, let me just go on, on this one. For example, rainy seasons ra- Rainy seasons varies depending on where you are. Would you agree with that one? I mean, yeah. Well, I guess so, yeah. I mean, I, I've got to be honest, Dave, and say I wouldn't know rainy seasons. I, didn't even, from yeah. I mean, you know, it rains or it doesn't rain as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and, I mean, yeah. Some people say to you, don't they, it's a rainy season next month, and you go, Really? Didn't it, not really, is yeah. it? You know, yeah. I mean, like, you know. I mean, they used to... They used to say, advertisers with the magazine I, I ran, mm. oh, I'm not going to advertise, it's, uh, it's low season. Really? When did that start? Would you, would you say in this, let me, let, me, let me put you into two scenarios. Let's just say you've never been to Thailand. Mm. You're in the UK and you want to come to Thailand. Would you book the hotel from England and just book everything so you know everything's right before you get to Thailand? Or are you the person that would say, I'm going to Thailand when I get there, I'm going to jump in a taxi and say, take me to a, a good hotel at a good price. <laughs> um, I have been the latter. Mm, okay. Um, but, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll give you, for instance, sure. uh, when I was uh, uh, married to number two. Um, number two? Number two of four. Sounds like a Bond film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I, I wanted to go to America, and I was quite happy to say that we'll go to you know five destinations mm. but i don't mind you know we'll, we'll just turn up and we'll get the hotel when we get there and my wife at the time was horrified by the thought absolutely horrified and she says i want everything booked i want to know where i'm going that's yeah and i i get that piece they want peace of mind yeah i understand that i mean when i first came to thailand i booked nowhere we got on the flight mm. we came here we mm. got off the flight we come to badia you know, and we said to the guy, you know, where's a good place? They told us where to go. We ended up in LK Mansion, which was the first place I ever stayed. Um, okay. And it was good. And we enjoyed it. And, of course, after a, a week or two of being here, you know where you are. And sort of you like you, you, you get your yeah. bearings. I mean, you, in retrospect, I think she might have had it right. Because we were going from, f- f- within the space of about three weeks, we went to five different destinations. Mm. And maybe turning up in five in, destinations in on, San Francisco hop, yeah. and not knowing where I wanted to, where I was going yeah, to stay sure, might sure. not have been a particularly good idea. Well, it so. says here, I mean, number three in the list, Dave, it says here, sensible travellers book ahead. <laughs> I mean, yeah. The, the thing is, it, if you book ahead, you are essentially, all right, the, the web has, in, has, has opened up uh, all sorts of things about mm. hotels, and you can see your rooms and mm. all this sort of mm-hmm. thing. You know, I'm talking about a time when you, it wasn't. You didn't know what was know, what. What one one hotel from another? Sure. And the idea of being committed to that hotel and maybe it being a poor one didn't appeal to me. No. But um, you know, it, 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 you used to go off recommendations of friends, wasn't it? Well, have you stayed you there? Know, yeah. It was I mean, good. You know, a lot of the places I went to at the time that I was going, mm. you know, no one within my circle of friends had ever been to. Never mind, at least it was an adventure. Um, not, well, number six on the list is dressed modestly. Um, oh, yeah. It says Thai, Thai women and men usually avoid revealing outfits. That's what it says here. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, it says that they, that they don't <laughs> not like... Not in some of the venues that I go to. They, they don't <laughs> like to show off a lot of skin. Well, I think that's true of, of, of the... Population, yes, I think that's true. I mean, you know, obviously, sure. uh, there are establishments here in Patia that, were, that might sort of, you know, make a lie out of that. But uh, you know, I think I think we're, we're talking of the the actual just ty- just the ties going around as a tourist. You know, I wouldn't recommend that 
uh, you know, sexist thing to say, maybe, but the, a woman, I wouldn't recommend that she goes around in a bikini. Yeah, sure. And, and also, of course, the men are not allowed to go around in without a shirt. I mean, yeah. a, a lot of people don't realise that, yeah. that it is disrespectful to I, walk around without I, a shirt. <laughs> I noticed the other day, I can't remember where I was, but a um, guy walked in and immediately put his shirt on before he walked any further. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah, of course, you, you Sure. He's doing what he's meant to. Do. I think it was food land, actually. Right. Yeah, the guy was wandering into food land, and obviously he'd been out, you know, getting himself all tanned up. Tanned up. But walking in the streets without a shirt, of course, is not allowed. I mean, it's actually yeah, they I don't they don't really allow it. But I think they, he probably was doing that, or yeah. maybe maybe he just got out of his car and he you know he was travelling around in his car without his shirt on. But uh, mm. certainly, you know, he knew enough to to put a shirt on as he walked into a supermarket. Good. I mean, it says here, so veg- vegetarian is a is a, re- a relative term in Thailand. You get that? Uh, well, vegetarian I, is a relative term I, in I, Thailand. I don't think they they differentiate at all. But mm. certainly, I think it's it's probably easier to eat a vegetarian diet in Thailand. Yeah, than I would. I, I would have said that. Yeah. I mean, and they eat a lot of fish, don't they? they fish well, and the, the the oysters and the well, and, and a lot of a lot of you know, fresh Plants. vegetables, yeah. a lot of fresh vegetables. I mean, how many you know, times have you? How many times have you driven on your motorbike and you've seen a woman at the side of the street pulling all the leaves off the trees and all the grass up, you know, mm. so she can take it home and stick it in the stew? Mm. Many, many a time I see yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, not for me, but yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 if it, if it's tasty, it's tasty. Yeah. Now, the one thing that we do want to talk about, and of course we've been asked about, of course, is um, health. You know, the health. I mean, you know, we're not the healthiest. Well, like, in fact, me and you are two two bad examples of <laughs> don't health. I think, don't think we've got anything to spout to anybody about yeah. on that subject. But yeah, we do carry on. Yeah, me, and, uh, me on my uh, last legs and mm-hmm. you, you get in there. Uh, no, it says that the health risks include over here, okay, um, stomach bugs, which is we do know of. Uh, you know, it can go and give you, and you end up on the toilet all the time. Mm. There is a there is a, a, a small bottle of white. Um, like milk that they sell in Seven Eleven with the green label, isn't it? I don't know the name. You guys out there may know the name. It used to remind me of something like you know the, the anti-acid drink that you drink. Milk and magnesia. Milk and magnesia. It's a bit mm. like that, but it's the Thai version. Mm. Um, that does help you a lot. Mm. So if you do get stomach bugs, drink some of that. You guys mm. out there probably know it. Mosquito bites. I mean, you know, I tend to find. And somebody said to me, "This is something that I, I, I thought was a joke, right?" <clears throat> He said to me, if you don't want to get mosquito bites, go to the market, buy the cheapest perfume you can buy, men's perfume, and stick it on your arms and your legs. Oh. And mosquitoes will not bite, not bite you because of the alcohol c- content. Yeah? Okay. I don't, okay, okay. And, and I can be honest. But can't you generate the alcohol content more naturally? Well, I don't drink like you, Dave, so <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't perspire vodka. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm wondering how I ever get a mosquito bite. Yeah, yeah well, there you go yeah. now. You know, you see, I did it the perfume way. You did it the alcohol <laughs> way. You drank it and I put it on. Yeah. Uh, but the, 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 I can honestly say, hand on my heart, that I've probably had very, very, very one or two mosquito bites since I've been in Thailand. And I always do do that. I do put the aftershave on my arms still today when I go out. Mm. The cheapest one possible. Uh, it smells terrible sometimes, but it's. I wonder but, what it was. Yeah, because yeah, well, yeah, cause that could be the socks. But the the um, the repellent that you buy out of Seven Eleven, of course. Mm. Somebody said to me, "Don't keep using the repellent." You know the purple one that you keep spraying yeah, all over yourself. Yeah, yeah. I said, "Why that?" It says because it's like vodka to them, like gin. Mm. They're, they're so used to it that oh, right. you know, they're just like they bite you anyway. So yeah. there we go. I, I, you know, of course, when I walk out this afternoon, it'll all. Go, um, all go, all go upside down, but um, I, uh, I've been very fortunate to date about mosquito bites. I don't often mm. get them. Well, they, I, don't we, think I'm, I, I think I just generate my own alcohol. We've solved it. that problem yeah, already, yeah. Dave. You stick to what you're doing, yeah, and you'll never it. get yeah, a mosquito three, three, bite. Three pints a night, and you, you'll three never pi- be bitten. There we go. Uh, that's yeah. the, that, you know, you've uh, given away you the know, secret. Doctor Dave has just given you his health. <laughs> That's going to cost you a fortune when you get that bill. Uh, the other thing, of course, to avoid in Thailand, which is very, very serious, of course, is do not get bitten by a dog. Because, oh, I yeah. mean, these dogs, these street dogs, you know, at the end of the day, rabies is all over the mm. place with these kind of dogs. Uh, which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, not so long ago, uh, Patia did quite a few cleanups 
it when it came to the dogs. I mean, a lot of dogs disappeared overnight. I mean, where I lived, there was quite a few dogs one day, and the next thing it was just clear. Okay. And I heard that uh, you know somebody did say that they'd gone round bit of a cull, bit of a cull, and, mm. and cleaned up these. Probably sold them to the Chinese. I don't know, uh, whatever. Uh, but you a, know. a friend of mine um, literally was bitten by a dog within the past three weeks, mm-hmm. and mm. uh, you know, he's had the shot. Get the shot down the hospital, yeah. clean up everything. You know, make sure that. Uh, I think he had to go back sort of seven or ten days later and mm. get a, you know, another look. Um, so it's not clever, it's not funny, and it's certainly, certainly, if you are bitten, don't don't just sort of shrug it off and say, oh well. You no, know. no, 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 no. If you get bitten I, by a dog, I, get there yeah, fast. I think uh, I think the following day it was pretty un- unpleasant to look at. Yeah. Put it that way. Yeah. So there you go. If you do get bitten by a dog, do not waste any time whatsoever. Get down to the uh, and, surgery and, don't and get it risk sorted. agitating them. I mean, you know, you get some guys who sort of think, oh, you know, if a dog barks at me, I've got to, I've got to respond in yeah, some no, way. No, 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 no. No, you just carry on walking. Just carry on walking, carry on walking. Yeah. There, there we go. So stay clear of the dogs. When we're talking of uh, like this, these, these are, these are sites... There's quite a few sites, actually, of course there is, that tell you what to do and not what to do when you come to Thailand. Mm. One of the things they do say on here straight away, which is, which is in red, prices, w- prices may well be inflated for tourists. <laughs> yeah, well, this is harking back to what we were discussing the other is, week, isn't this it? Is, yeah. This is what we're... You yeah, know, the, 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 two pri- the double pricing system. Double but, pricing uh, system. But, I mean, you... Yeah. I think, Wait, th- I think the thing I would say to anyone coming here is the first price that you're given isn't necessarily the price. No. And, and it's not rude, and, you know, and it's almost expected... So say, give me a th- discount. ...that you say, you know, well, if I get two, can I get sure. you know, for this or yeah, sure. that? Or, or suggest a figure. And go deliberately, stupidly the other way and, and meet somewhere in the middle. Yeah, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, something is worth what you're willing to pay sure, for it. Sure, absolutely. And barter is not a bad word in Thailand. No, absolutely Whatever not. you do, I absolutely mean, you know, if you come into Thailand, do barter because it's it's the culture here, it's part of the it's, culture. It's almost it's expected. Expected, expected yeah. like it's you said, not, It's not rudeness, it's not, you know, you're not... Uh, you're not sort of saying they're lying or anything like that when they, they mm. quote you the first price. I mean, no. I, was, I was looking at a, a, a football shirt the other day and I, was, I think I was quoted 550 straight away. Mm. And I thought, well, you know, pretend I'm not interested. And, um, you know, started to walk away. And, and it was down to 500 before I'd walked two steps. I mean, you know, and I guess if I'd hovered around, it might have got near a 450. Well, there's, nothing, yeah. there's nothing wrong in There's nothing wrong. I think, you know, when we speak about, you know, uh, dual price and we talk about prices may be inflated for tourists, I mean... You know, can you name me one place in the world where people don't try it on with tourists? I well, mean, no. I mean, yeah, most if, of them if, do. If you, I, I would imagine that uh, there's been studies at some time or other because people study all sorts of weird things. But mm. I would imagine that the price of an ice cream in central London is a tad higher than one on the outskirts of the city. I mean, you know, it's just it's expected, and indeed, you know, behind some of these higher prices, there mm. is the the, the, the real consideration that um, actually they're paying more for the pitch that they're selling sure. to you from. Mm. I mean, you know, if you've got a pitch next to you know, the Tower of London, you'd expect that to be premium rate, you know, a, a top rate. Top rate, yeah. So you've got to earn that mm. before you start to make a profit. I think the best. I mean, if you if you if you come in over and you come in on holiday, I mean, you know, and uh, you go into the shops or wherever you go. I mean, number one is don't buy the first thing you see. And also go to the local markets, go to the big markets mm. and, and, and go on there and you'll probably find the same item at half the price. It's just that you've, you've got to look around and, and like with the, the shops, you don't, the shops, you don't get too much of a bartering chance, but the markets, of course, you will do. So, I mean, mm. I would say, you know, go for the barter there. That's yeah. probably my I advice. mean, I, you know, when I'm looking for uh, polo shirts, golf shorts, shirts, call it what you will, you know, I usually go to Mike's shopping mall, mm. and uh, you know, everyone, far off. everyone's got your size. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so you know, uh, that can't is, walk past the place without saying, "That got is a your big size, Mister." Got your size, Yeah, that, that's that's a and big, when you're a big, big so and so like me, mm. then you know, that you, know, you think, "Oh, all right, okay. Well, let's listen a bit more." Mm. And uh, I mean, I 
I don't know. I'm, I'm sure I'm still paying over the odds. You still got to remember you've that, got, that you've got a bit of bartering going, and, and as long as you sort of have a, a smile on happy, your face, happy. as long as you have a smile on your face, mm. what the, you know, people who really annoy the you know, the Thai people mm. are those that want to be adversarial all the mm, time. They sure. want to sort of say, "Oh no, you're ripping me off." Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, you, yeah. you might think. Someone's ripping you off, but you don't tell them. No, 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 you no, don't, no, no. You don't insult them to their face. You don't insult them to the face. You smile. Yeah, you, you pay you them smile, and you walk away. That's you, it. Or, or, yeah, walk away. Walk away. Don't buy don't it. Don't buy it. Whatever. Don't buy it. You, don't you, don't you don't have to say anything. You don't have to say. But the one thing I do, the one thing I do agree with this, and that is, don't the European people don't get uh, the the sizes mixed up because you know when they say small, medium, large, and you go, oh, I'm an extra large, and they give you an extra large, and you get it home, and you put it on, and it's like a boob tube. Mm. You know, it's, it's a Thai version of the extra large. You must, mm. you must say, and you must try it on when you're there, because their, their extra large is like a small or a medium sometimes, isn't it, David? I mean, yeah. you know yourself trying to get your size, no disrespect. I mean, at the end of the day, there's certain places that you have to go to to get your size shirt. Yeah, and... All right, you know, there aren't sort of you know, Marks and Spencer changing rooms or no. whatever. But you know, I mean, the other day I was buying a pair yeah. of shorts, and they said, "Do you want to try them on?" And I said, "Yes, please," because you know, there's no point in me trying it on you know, in five hours' time and finding that you know, they don't, don't fit. fit. Yeah, sure. So I, you know, I was shown sort of the back room mm. for for a bit of privacy, supposedly. I kid you not. <laughs> if I. If one woman p- walked past me, five did. Oh, there you go. And I thought, are they you know, are they checking me out here, or, or you know, are they are they genuinely yeah. looking for for more items of clothing? But I mean, you know, pr- private, it certainly was definitely not. I mean, I used to go to one where they used to put like that curtain with mm. a, with, a, with a bit of some elastic mm. around you, so they used to put it over your head, mm. and it used to be here with the elastic, and you mm. could change underneath it. And but I mean, take you know, it off. It's a it bit is what a, it is. It's a bit of a faff, but. How how annoying to get home and then find it doesn't fit. No, 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 no. So, no. you know, that. I'd always say, you know, if what I'm giving advice on mm. one of these sites, I'd say, you know, don't be embarrassed about asking to try something on. Good, there it's we go. It's far better to do it that way than, than you know, be, be disappointed later. I mean, a bargain is not a bargain if you can't wear it. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That was cheap. Yeah, but it don't fit you. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> you, got, you did well there, then. <laughs> for sale, eBay. Yeah. Um, all right, Dave, we've covered a lot today. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us, yeah? It's been a really cool show today, and uh, we've covered a lot of things. And like we said, if you want to get down here and you want to get on the show with us, you're welcome to do so. We're on Mondays and Fridays at 2 a.m., and you're welcome to come in the studio and talk with me and Dave about whatever you like to talk about. Try Com- 2 p.m. Uh, 2 p.m. Sorry, two, what did I say? 2 a.m. <laughs> did I? I'm not getting up at that time. Must be the vodka. I'm glad you're in. <laughs> I might still right. be. A, I might still be up drinking then. Wouldn't, but that, that's wouldn't <laughs> that be a good show? <laughs> <laughs> 2 p.m. on a Monday and a Friday. You're welcome to join me and Dave Buckley in the studio uh, down here. And of course, talk about whatever you want to do. It's free. Come in and have a chat. We'd like to see you, Dave. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Take care, guys. Bye bye. Thanks a lot. AX Media. Our team of creatives, designers, and developers collaborate closely to produce visually stunning and captivating digital experiences. Our team is carefully structured to deliver exceptional, personalized, and inventive digital solutions from the initial idea to the final product launch.